Welcome back to Deliberately Creative. We are going to be doing this fun kind of architectural townhouse window with a critter sitting in it. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm excited. I hope you are too. Oh, let's get started by saying hello. I'm Stephanie and this is Deliberately Creative. We do painting, drawing, doodling, and general shenanigans and having fun in the chat. I hope that you are ready for maybe winding down for your evening or just sort of revving back up after a long day at work. Who knows? Who knows? Welcome everyone coming into the chat. I am so excited that you're here. Make sure if you're new, click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when new videos go up. And after we get going here, if you like what you see, make sure and click that like button and let your friends know. That's a big help to me. All right, guys. Welcome. Welcome. Second time today. Am I tired? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit, but you know, it's, I'm also kind of trying to wind down and it's four in the afternoon. I've got a second cup of coffee right here. So, you know, I'm just going to have a really nice kind of chill afternoon. This is, this is a very chill painting. Anybody interested in the designs, where they came from? It was during a 14 hour long marathon and I drew up 30 designs. They are all together in one book and they are going to be linked up above in the iCard. They are already linked down below in the more information and over in the chat pinned at the top is the link for the digital download that you can purchase and print for yourself to print out for a coloring book for your kids to uh, just have something kind of small and cozy that you can tuck into your bag. It's a lot of fun. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, my Valentine project that's coming up, but we're going to get started here painting. I am going to go ahead and bring up the other view. Yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. I have had some interesting time looking at my analytics for YouTube. <laughs> kind of kind of scary right now I am going to go ahead this I'm going to say is a little dog and it it I'm going to trim his tail so it's kind of carroted and it will be like a little Westie or something a little Karen Terrier or Westie setting up in the window however the original has a cat and you are more than welcome to do the cat but I this one just he got really fluffy and he ended up being kind of Persian but I didn't have any information on how to draw a Persian cat so you know I had to, to to make it work out the way it would work out for me I am using the little fan palette here again I like this little fan palette because it's so convenient and just get that sitting there oh I do have to set uh, click on the Click on the record button on my phone. Ha ha, yay, I remembered. All right, so this is basically going to be worked going from the window out. We are starting with the window glass getting filled in. I am not putting the curtain in here. I refuse. No curtains, no blinds. Since the dog is looking into the room, it's just going to be dark in the very background. So, still looks like a cat to you. It can look like a cat to you. <laughs> if you want to make it a, you know, stripy tab, tabby cat or whatever, you know, have fun. I had a Westie, so that's kind of, I think, why it feels like a Westie to me. West Highland White Terrier. I had one for 16 years. He was just over 16 when he passed. All right, so I have wet down the inside of that window and I am going to make this kind of a dark color. So I am, and I did leave some areas in there dry. I'm going to take some of that Prussian blue and that sepia brown 
make that kind of really dark tone that I kind of like. My dog thought he was a cat, so hello, Darcy, and shiny people. I like that. Hello, shiny people. All right, so we're going to go up here, and we're going to just get the inside of this window. We're going to get it a little bit wet and dark, but we're going to have a little bit of some reflection. I think it might be trees or something that's up there like on the street. Look at that. How quickly that sweet little reflection went in. Boom. That's all we need there. And then, well, I say all we need there. And then I'm like, well, I want to make this corner up here a little darker. And right along there a little bit darker. But the reflection of the glass is going to be, is really white. Let's see here. I need a towel to dry my brush on. And I'm going to kind of wipe back a little bit of that area there. And then use my towel to kind of just blot it off. Look at that clean up that windowsill. The windowsill is going to be darker anyway, so I don't know why I was bothering with that. But, you know, I'm going to bring this dark in here. The dog is up in the window. He, he Or cat. The critter is in the window. And its back is sort of pushed up against the glass. It's looking inside. And I'm just going to work it. I'm making the tail smaller. You don't have to. You can make the tail however sized you want it to be. I'm going to get this wet again because it kind of dried out a little bit on me. Just so that it can flow around. Architectural things tend to have very solid hard lines but you notice I did not put these lines in with a ruler some of the lines are really super straight and some of them are really super wobbly and that just adds to the charm especially when you've got those you know very architectural going out and doing the um, urban sketching you know doing some of that urban sketching, which is something I want to do more of. I have a neighbor, Jill, who she, she'll just go drive in the car and go stop someplace and sit outside of a business or down on a street that looks interesting. And she'll just paint. She does gouache and she does, you know, she'll, she does watercolor and gouache and all of that. And she'll just paint in the car and then she'll come on back home. So she also lives, she's my neighbor to the, to the one side of me. And she actually, her backyard backs up to the, to the Catholic cemetery. So we have very quiet neighbors in the neighborhood. It's kind of nice. One side of, one side of the neighborhood has the, uh, Catholic cemetery and then across the front um, and going across the back end of our neighborhood actually is the um, United States Veterans C Cemetery. So we've got um, Medal of Honor winners from the um, Spanish-American War. We've got, you know, all kinds of stuff back there. I'm just putting a little bit of some dark on here to make it feel like there might be tree that's reflecting or something. It's very, very sketchy, almost uh, kind of script-like. See how it just sort of feels like little branches or, or maybe telephone poles or something is up there just, just reflecting in that window. So you've got some shadows reflecting and you've got 
light reflecting. That's cool. Yes, they do stay very quiet. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're working on a painting while listening to me? Aw, thank you. You know, I, I do. I put on other people's videos so that I can listen to them while I'm working. Although, yeah, last night when I was working on my Valentine project, getting that all figured out, I was actually listening to an audiobook that was recommended by uh, Cinnamon, the art Sherpa. <laughs> so, because I do like fantasy and uh, stuff like that, and this was a fantasy series that she had, that she had recommended. She's been recommending on her, on her channel recently because it's something she's obsessed with. I don't know that I'm going to become obsessed with this, but it's fun. I am just going to make that a wee bit darker down at the bottom. Get a little bit more of that sepia tone in there. I am working on it kind of at a kind of zoomed out distance here. There we go. See, the neat thing is, is that mixing these colors, the blue and the black, or blue and the uh, sepia, I'm getting this lovely black that does kind of, um, does kind of granulate a little bit, which is very surprising, being that these are super inexpensive watercolors, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so if you're interested, the series is by the author Annette Marie. And this is in her Demon Codex series. It's real interesting because my brother is an author. And I haven't actually read very many of his books. But one of his series is... A demon series so it's I'm going to have to read his after I listen to this and see but he's an author on um, on Amazon so his books are you know direct to print uh, Kindle direct printing all right we're gonna let that dry You live in Vegas. It's quieter since COVID, but it's still Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Hey there, Linda. Welcome. And Leanne is watching while having her breakfast. See, Leanne, I do try to get some every once in a while that are at a time when you can watch also. At a reasonable time for you to watch also. Okay. I said I was going to stop. And then, of course, I'm like, well, maybe I'll just sort of move the color around just a little bit. Again, it's just, eh, I don't really like those scribbly, light, scribbly lines quite so much. I'm going to soften them up a little bit. And, ha, huh, there. Oh, that's making me happier. Just soften them up a little bit. They're still there. They're still there, but now they're softened up and feel more reflected. All right, I'm not happy with what happened right there just now, so I'm going to smooth it out and I will just drop some more color right on there. What happened was the paint was not dry, so it was not stuck to the paper all the way. And since this paper really does release the paint, I'm just going to put more color right up there and more color right down here too so just drop it in nice and nice and wet and drop it in if it makes little cauliflowers or back runs or weird things I'm just going to go with it just go with it there we go all right ah uh, well thank you guys so much 
for being here. I appreciate that. Look at how that looks. It looks like there's reflection, there's deepness, darkness going back in. Uh, this is actually a printout from my computer. I've got a fuzzy. Uh, the, a printout from my printer, I mean. So I printed this out just like you would. I, and I printed it on watercolor paper. It's printed on the, the Arteza Expert Cold Press Double-Sided Acid-Free Glue Bound Watercolor Paper for Watercolor Techniques and Mixed Media. It's the one with the bicycle on it. It's 140 pounds and there's 32 sheets. And this is back in stock. So if you were waiting for that, it is back in stock, the two-pack. And if you check my information down below, I do have a coupon code for 10% off your entire purchase. And if they have a, a site-wide sale going on, you can actually, or the individual things are on sale, as long as you didn't have to put a code in to get that sale, you can get that sale and an additional 10% off with my coupon code. So that's kind of a cool thing. I'm going to dry this. And then we are going to, then we are going to start putting in some of the colors. I think I will go ahead and put the burgundy red. I like the colors of this, the green, the sort of soft teal blue and the burgundy. So there we go. What time is it in Vancouver? It is Wednesday afternoon 4 15 p.m or 4 17 p.m i know that you're tomorrow already <laughs> yeah thank you Lorianne. hello paulette welcome ah oh, guys i i am so happy that you guys are here You just got a stay at home order by your premiere today. Only go out for essentials. Yeah, Gail, we, um, I already just do the go out just for essentials. So it's kind of, ah, you know, par for the course for me right now. I am going to go ahead. There is sort of a burgundy color right here. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So I'm going to go ahead and transfer some of that onto my palette here. And then I am going to... Yeah, Thursday morning at 8.15 a.m. <laughs> is what it is in Leanne's world. And then there's this one. Ooh. So the two of those together, I'm going to be able to get my highlights and shadows. And this is just that inside edge. Right here. This particular picture is going to be very color book style I'm really not I'm going to be color painting pretty much flat colors a little bit of detail but I'm I'm kind of in the mood for just something super super simple but really pretty so simple and pretty so when this is done it's going to be very pretty look how dark that burgundy is now let's zoom in you can't hardly see that can you there we go so this is the burgundy on top of that sort of, I don't know, kind of crimson red, I think. Look at that. Ooh, yum. That's pretty. So, you know, some details here and there, getting some, some of the color put in. If I end up going a little wide, no big deal. You are looking at this from down on the ground some. There we go. So I'm saying we see kind of up under the frame just a little bit. And I'm looking at that on the, on the reference and kind of see that also. neat thing about something like this is that you can do it flat you know you don't have to do a ton of detail and if you end up with 
like those little spots of white showing up right here. I think I want to keep those. <laughs> and this bit up here on the edge, I want to keep some of that. But underneath of it, I want it to be dark. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting time for a lot of us as we're navigating the world in the, the sort of pandemic age, waiting for those, those vaccines to come through, waiting for people to build up the proper immunity, getting enough people built up. See, it's not, it's not enough that, you know, like, say, I get it. I get the, um, the, my brain just went dead. Not enough to say if I get the vaccine, then, hey, I'm fine because you're not. Uh, it takes, it takes a period of time for the immunity to build up in your system. And it's not instantaneous. After the first shot, they say it's, you have like 55 or maybe 60% immunity so you'll still need to get your second that that second booster or the second shot and you know you want to make sure that they're giving you the right thing so always check there we go I'm looking at that going this is this is pretty I like the I kind of like this combination and it's not going to look too Christmassy. I was kind of at first thinking, oh, that green, but that green with this burgundy does not look like Christmas. It just looks like a townhome, maybe in uh, some big city. And I'm just drying that a little bit where I dabbed it with my my brush to kind of clean that up a little bit. Let's zoom out and see what that looks like. Ooh, we'll just zoom out way far. It makes it, it makes it nice because it's like being able to look at it like I'm standing across the street <laughs> when I put it in this much more zoomed out state. That looks really cool. All right, I think we can zoom in. Hello, Jan, and welcome. All right, I'm going to let that dry for just a second. Oh, put it back in. Yeah, nah, I'm going to, I'm going to paint a little more and then we'll talk about the Valentine project. So I am going to go in and start making a kind of a teal turquoisey color so I am taking this sort of phthalo blue that's not the phthalo blue that I was thinking it was this is yeah this one's a little bit more yeah that one's a little bit more phthalo -y. again they don't give you the um, the numbers the pigment numbers on these It's a cat dog. <laughs> yeah, I've heard about cat dog. I've never actually seen cat dog, but I had a cat dog. My Westie, the one that I'm kind of thinking about that as being a Westie, little West Highland White Terrier. Um, he thought he was a cat, I'm sure. Laying up on the back of the couch, peering out the window. He did like to burrow under covers. He did like to curl up for all kinds of things. Yet yeah, looking out at the night sky. Yeah. Well, this little guy has the back of his head to us. So he's looking into the room instead of looking out the window. The mailman has already come, so he doesn't care. And I am looking at that going, I want a little bit... Ooh, okay, that, that went a little too much in the, in the Christmas direction. So now I've made it really dark. 
Hello, Mary Myers. Yes, you made it. And yes, Leanne, it's a Westie. And that is definitely a Westie thing. They do, they, they have minds of their own. And they are very much of the... There we go. This is going to be a little bit darker, but... Well, maybe not. Maybe I can light... Ooh. Make it a little more acid. And then just a touch of burgundy in it, maybe? Kind of purple it up just a smidge. All right. We're just going to go with it. We're going to go with it. We're going to paint in this whole area. So... I kind of expanded my wood molding here, it looks like, around that window. See what I'm doing here? My hand is resting on the on the paper, on the, the paint, a paint. My hand is resting on the paper and I'm not lifting it up. And once I put my brush down, I can make it go in a pretty straight line, just pulling it down the paper. And then I can go like that and color that in a little bit. See, I'm just, I'm just having fun here, guys. I hope that you are, and I hope that you are finding fun and enjoyable things to do with your time. If you're looking for something to occupy your time and keep you, keep you busy, keep you out of trouble, painting, drawing, any of those types of creative pursuits are actually very, very good for you. They help your brain day. Make something beautiful. You add beauty to the world when you paint and you draw and you color, or you add something that's important to you. You know, maybe what you're doing doesn't turn out to be something that's beautiful, but it turns out to be important to you. Anyway, many times we do things for our mental health that others would wonder at our stability sometimes. And you know what? You don't have to show people that work if you don't want to. I am looking at that going, oh, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I need darker. I'm going to take some more of that blue, that sort of phthalo -y blue, and some more of that Prussian-y blue. There we go. Now we're getting a really dark green. And this is wet still. So I'm not doing my final details here, but I am putting some shadows in. I want them to blur. I want them to blur out a little bit. I don't want them to be solid. It's okay if they blur out. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to soften some of these colors out if there isn't enough water to blur them out. Oh, I'm looking at that going, ooh, that's a, that going across there is actually a full, full across the way green windowsill. So, ah, we're all crazy here. <laughs> Hi, Tammy Diaz. Yeah. I'm back for the day. I am having fun doing these videos, and so, and I am a little bit behind for the month still, because You know, the first weekend of the month, I took both Saturday and Sunday off. And I have caught up those two, the Saturday and the Sunday, 
but I haven't caught up this week's Sunday. <laughs> so this might end up being a, a little bit of a challenge that goes over into February. I hope you guys don't mind that. Uh, February is going to be, I'm going to pull back just a little bit on how many live streams I'm doing. I know that you guys really enjoy the live streams and I do too. I really enjoy the live streams more than going and re recording and doing all of that. I don't think I'm going to be doing more dropped videos. I just think I'm not going to be doing as many videos in February because March we're going to do our little houses, which that's one of the reasons for doing this one, I think, was that it kind of wets the whistle for the little houses. Yeah, that kind of teal blue green, the whole thing. I think that's good. And you don't want it to be a solid flat color. If you look at it, there's some shadow and there's some highlights. Huh, don't worry about it, Jan. The, uh, you'll love the roses in the, in the handbag. You will love them. All right. The, I'm going to dry this and we're going to zoom out. And then we're going, I'm going to show you a little bit of the Valentine project. I showed some earlier. I showed it earlier today. Okay, we'll let that dry. I'm going to push that down and get my tape back in engaged mode so that it doesn't go leaking underneath. There we go. And now we will zoom out. I'll just zoom out all the way. And show you. I have made a... Um, Let's see here. Do I have a I'm trying to think if I have a better view? I don't really think so. All right. So I have made this. I'll pick up the brush in a minute. Uh, this is a set that can be painted, can be colored. It's like a little coloring book. So you open it up and you have six hearts that are in here. And now I made this, so if people don't want to come and learn how to draw all six of these hearts, it's already a downloadable book on my Teespring. And with this downloadable book, you can print it out on text weight paper and fold it up, and it becomes a cute little coloring book that you can put into an envelope and mail off for one stamp. Or you can print it out on watercolor paper. So this is printed on watercolor paper and it shows you, you know, what it will look. So what I did, this is the bottom of the page and it does have a full color version of one of the pieces that's in the book. So see, that's the bottom and then that's the top. But with the watercolor cards, you can Give somebody six postcards, six Valentines that they can print and or that they that you've already printed that they can just start painting. See? So six six Valentines. And it's only four dollars and fifty cents on my on my Teespring. It's really a great deal. I know I've had people going, you charge too little for your stuff, but I want people to be able to enjoy sharing artwork with others. So, you know, you, you could put this into an envelope. You would probably have to put an extra stamp on it. I have not weighed this with 140 pound watercolor paper to find out how heavy it is, but isn't that a pretty little booklet or a folder? This is a folder because they're individual cut sheets. And this is a booklet because it's all folded together and the pages or just like that. Hope you guys like that. You'll check it out. And it's also a fun way to be able to support my channel. <laughs> you know? It's a fun way to support my channel. You get something 
in return, you know, so instead of doing like a, a super chat where you don't, I mean, you don't really get that much. I mean, yes, you're supporting the, the person that you're helping out or my brain, just a second. You are supporting the creator, but you're not supporting them as much as you think because the super chats take like 30% or something of the money that you give and Teespring doesn't take that much. They, they take just a, like a 5% or a 10%. So it works better that way for me. Um, so if you're looking for the link for the Valentine book, check the link that's in the chat or down below for Teespring and you're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and water down some of that green and start, actually, I'm going to give it a wash of that green around the outside. Oops. And I'm just going to dry like that, just to pick up the puddles right down there at the bottom. And then I'm going to take the Prussian blue, darken it up. And I know it's going to bleed right now. And that's okay. Because I want sort of a softer color going in just like that. I want to make that a little more green. So it kind of matches that molding up above. And this, this really is color booking. We are not, not too worried about making things perfect. The whole house itself is kind of a baby blue the posts and such. So I'm just going to dry that with a paper towel. Boom. Little, little dot right there. Suck up a little bit of that paint down here. I'm going to, my brush is a little bit dry. So I'm kind of sucking out some of that paint. It's like uh, reverse painting. You put the paint down and then you use a dry brush and it sort of wicks some of those colors up. See how we're getting that frame to go in around it now? Hmm, pretty exciting. I'm excited about that. This bit down here, um, I have no idea. I'm gonna actually say that that area down below is going to end up being the red. I'm gonna say that they, they have a red area down here. Or it could be the baby blue. Hmm. Maybe I'll just do baby blue. But I like having that red maybe one more place. So. There we go. All right. So I'm going to dry that really fast. Be oh. Oh. I didn't show you. So these are what they, the cards look like when they're watercolored and when they're not. Sorry, I, I had them sitting there to show you and I didn't show them to you. This one has metallic gold in the dots and that one. So anyhow, yeah, they're really fun Valentine cards. We're going to do the uh, marathon is going to be six drawings of the cards and then the uh, second marathon is going to be painting them. And I am taking that dark red. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. That dark red down here, even though the paint around it is there we go. Even though the green is wet, I'm going to do it. I live dangerously. You can always let things dry. You don't have to, you don't have to go in and do crazy things like me. 
You don't have to be crazy like me to, to be here. It's just more fun, right? Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you, Leanne. So there we go. All right, I am going to wipe off the screen now. Actually, no, wipe off the red. I'm going to wipe off the red. And there's not very much there. There we go. And then that's going to give me a place to put my blue. I would make an excellent children's book illustrator. You know, that is something that I would like to pursue at some point. I'm looking at that blue and the blue is actually very green. So I'm going to go ahead and take the phthalo blue and a touch of that green that we have down here. Oh, look at that. Just grab some of that green that was down below. And then water. And there's going to be some shadows, but I am going to go ahead and put this on all over everything that's white pretty much. And then we'll go back in and shadow it up and maybe highlight. There, I'm gonna pull that color around now. I don't necessarily want it to be quite that bright. Let's just get that color pulled around. So I'm just picking up color from that side and bringing it to the other side. I have not finished the little dog yet, but there's not gonna be much to put on that little dog. A little bit of gray uh, shadow, not too much because he's actually sitting in the window. It would be fun. I would have to find a, basically find a book that I want to illustrate. Maybe something that's in the public domain that I could play with and sort of start building, building a portfolio with, but you know, there's so many things going on in my life with all the different uh, YouTubery things. I'm going to zoom out so we can see that a little better. I'm looking at that going. All right. So what are we looking at? We are looking at, I did not draw the corbels up here the same way. So they don't have as much detail in them. I made an assumption of what up here looked like. So it's whatever I want it to be. You enjoy painting, but your drawing is not up to scratch. What would I recommend? Drawing. You um, find something that interests you. So say you like, um, what's something that you like? You like, uh, model cars, you like uh, robots, find something that interests you, find a model of it, and then draw it, and draw it every day. And if you can make yourself do it, draw it a couple times a day. And keep it all in one journal, keep it all in one journal book. And that sketchbook is just for drawing that thing. And then do it for 30 days and look at what you did the first time versus what you did the 30th day. And you will surprise yourself. For, at first you go, well, I haven't really improved, right? I haven't done, I haven't improved any, I can't see any improvement. But then that's because you're looking at the moment. You're not looking at the accumulated time. So, You build your, you, you build your vac visual vocabulary of that item. And that is a really, really good way to learn because you're going to look at it and you're going to be looking at it a lot of times. Does that help? 
What picture cut off? <laughs> hey there, Ian. Welcome. It was a cat. I made it look like a dog. And she still, th and Sue still thinks it looks like a cat. And yeah, the, it's, it's a Westie. My brain says it's a Westie. <laughs> so there we go. But yeah, that's Michael. Does that help you? I hope that helped. And for anybody that wants to learn to draw something or to draw better, you know, even if what you're drawing, you say, I'm going to draw teacups and I'm going to draw teacups for a month. Kind of like last month when I did all of those uh, ornaments and glass. My goodness, I got way better with glass by the end of the month versus what I was doing at the beginning of the month. Right? I mean, I could see a difference in my actual artwork. Right here, what I'm doing is I'm kind of looking at it and going, well, where would some shadow be? I'm making up my shadows. This has a bit of reflection across the window. It's just sort of an up-close view. It's not... Um, One, you know, now, now I'm kind of doing this as just a, a practice of putting color down. <laughs> I'm just practicing my color and laying, laying color down. We can, you know, we can finish at any point. Says the person who, you know, <laughs> it's kind of like, um, you become a paint addict and you have to get your hit of this paint. You have to get a hit of color. But this is a perfectly acceptable thing to be doing. It's okay to be a, a, addicted to creativity. Build that, build that into your mind. There we go. See, I'm just, I'm layering up some colors. I'm not worried about, I'm not really worried about where the shadows are. I'm, I'm kind of just making it up as I go. Gasp. <laughs> but it's fun to do and I'm going to darken up this edge. I don't, I want it to be a little bit darker. Maybe there's a big old tree or something off to this side and it's casting a bit of a shadow that one that's causing the the branch look in the window maybe I don't have a good reference for what I'm doing right here this is just making it up hello Madoon welcome welcome we are having fun and just enjoying playing with some color this, this artwork was drawn during a 14 hour marathon of art where I drew all 30 designs for this whole month. This is number 12. I still have 18 more designs in this book to paint. So we are, we did the Pop-Tarts uh, yes, yesterday, day before yesterday. We did the crazy quilt yesterday. Yeah, Ian, I did a quilt. <laughs> Earlier today, we did the roses in a basket, and right now we're doing this. So that gives you your three-way three -way picture, right? The reference, what I drew, and what we painted. Look at that. Isn't that fun? And here, let me, uh, let me grab it. All right, that was the roses that we did this morning. And that was the crazy quilt that I did yesterday. Ready to be um, personalized. Ready to be personalized. So, there we go. <laughs> All right. Gina... Oh, wow. Yeah, there you go. Um, so just for anybody, uh, anybody's interest in what's going on here, uh, 
Gina is my moderator. She is uh, the only one that's allowed to talk about their business outside of me um, or my other moderators. And so if Ian has a live stream coming up, I know he doesn't hang out in here very often, but Ian is like well, one of my buddies. <laughs> and he does, he's been doing a lot of quilting on his channel and crafts. He is the guild president of, he is a, he's the guild president of one of the guilds in Texas. And I'm not sure, I, Dallas, Fort Worth guild, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. Ian, l let me know which guild that you're the, the, the president of. It's so cool. I, I love seeing, I love seeing people's quilts. I am going to put a deeper tone or brighter tone, maybe of this green. Cause I want to, I want to strengthen that up just a little bit. Maybe give it a little bit of some shadow in under the edges, a little bit of highlight still. There we are. See, little highlight, little shadow, little bit of fun, little bit of fun for everyone. Oh my goodness, that made me think of light bright. <laughs> and this is the burgundy. I'm just going to take it in and give it sort of a wash of a bit more of a shadow. And yeah, this is kind of cartoony, and I think that's okay. I am going to gray or blue up maybe a little bit. Blue it up. I blew it up. Oh no. Use the blue color, Prussian blue. And I'm going to just put a little bit of the shadow because right where the dog is pushing against the window, you'll see a bit of a shadow. You can make this a cat if you want. You can put a collar on it if you want. Little bits, little bits of color. Not a lot. White dogs are not actually white. They are more, they are gray. Yeah, it's very antique. It's it's kind of like almost what you would think of for a brownstone building or something like that. I am looking at this thinking maybe a wee bit darker. So look, what did I do? I just picked up some of that dark color that's already in the painting and put it into that blue and darkened it up. You can do that. The neat thing is when you use colors that are already in the painting, it's not going to clash or cause a dissonance. Isn't it fun? Sometimes just doing a window or a little part of a building, it gives you a sense of, there's kind of almost a sense of mystery or anticipation. It's a fluff ball, definitely. And so I see, actually this bit right down here, I'm going to make it darker. Now that the, the painting has dried a bit, I'm grabbing some of that Sienna Brown, or not Sienna Brown, Sepia Brown and the Prussian blue and making it a very dark, dark color. Look at that. Make this, he's looking into this room that is so much darker. I wanted to make him 
feel like he's brighter. So how do you make the dog feel brighter or the cat in the window feel brighter? You darken up the area around it. Just like anything. Contrast makes it, contrast makes it happen. Why I have that spot there. There we go. Okay. And yeah, this just gives us a a soft and just a lovely, lovely painting here. I'm kind of wor working those edges so where it started to get a little bit dry, the paint was back running. Really what I was doing was making it darker so that where I gave him the uh, trimmed his tail, you don't see it. The music is lulling you to sleep. You know, I love that music. It is... Um, Ash, let's see, many of the, many of the pieces, well, they all come out of the YouTube, get, uh, the YouTube free audio library. So, you know, that, uh, that's where it kind of goes. Now this, the heat, the dryer kind of blows out the the pretty sound of the music but Debbie have fun enjoy the, the the game show tonight I'm just drying it off and I'm really I'm basically at the end I'm going to pull the tape off and sign it <laughs> this one is a much quicker and there we go a much more simple painting I needed a simple painting so now I'm going to pull the tape off. By heating it up, the tape becomes, uh, the adhesive becomes soft and it pulls off the paper without tearing the paper. There we go. Move that out of the way. And so look at that. What did we end up with? We ended up with a window in a building with a dog instead of a cat. <laughs> but you can have a cat if you want to. So I'll just take that off. There we go. So we've got fun stuff here. There we go. I am really excited by this. I hope you are. We are going to be doing the uh, waffle? I believe the waffle is tomorrow. Waffles and flour with a cup of coffee or tea, whatever makes you happy. And it's going to just be fun and, you know, this could be some fancy gems, I guess, but I'm going to make it chocolate waffle. <laughs> so I want you to join me back here. If you want to join me with the designs you can certainly go and click that link for teespring over in the chat up in the icard down in the more information box click the like button subscribe to the channel share the video with your friends and if you're going over to teespring remember i have the marathon that's going to be scheduled for saturday i'm going to be teaching how to draw all of these hearts but if you only want to come for part of the day, you can download the, the drawing that, uh, file and print them out so you can paint them. But you've got a little mailing book, color book that you can mail off to people for, val for your valentines. You can make them a folder book or you can paint your valentines and send them off. And these, you can actually, you know, put a little bit of wax over this and 
address it and they are postcard size because they're one quarter sheet of paper. So thank you guys. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again tomorrow and at 11 a.m. <laughs> I, I think that it accidentally was scheduled for 4 o'clock and it shouldn't have been. So 11 a.m. tomorrow, Thursday. <laughs> and it's going to be fun. Chocolate waffles and coffee? Yum. I might have to make that for dinner tonight. <laughs> Take care, guys. Bye.